I know it has been prompted by rumors and speculation that I have relinquished my position as traditional Prime Minister to the Zulu monarch and nation, and that His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu Gazultini has asked me to do so, or that I have requested permission to do so. None of this speculation is any basis on truth. At the center of this whole matter is this article by Mr. Jacob Nisi, which all of you may have seen, which stated King Mrs. Zulu will have to nominate another person to chair in Gonyama Transport after Jacob Nisi declined the offer. Businessman Nisi has blamed tribalism for his withdrawal as the nominee of the Ngonyama Trust Board chairperson post. This is the main center of all this that is happening, Mr. Jacob. Nisi, a businessman from Pumalanga province. And what has circulated is premised, from what I can understand, on discussions between the king and I on Sunday, the 14th of May. And I must point out, ladies and gentlemen, that When His Majesty the King meets with his Prime Minister or writes to his Prime Minister, the content of discussions is not intended for public consumption and it is by its very nature private and confidential. Yet, it has not stopped anyone, of course, from pretending to know what His Majesty and I discuss or from publishing rumors claiming to be reports of our private discussions with the king. So, for the sake of setting the record straight on this Miroma, I'm compared, ladies and gentlemen, to divulge now what took place in my meeting with His Majesty on the 14th of May as it relates to the position of traditional Prime Minister. In that meeting on the 14th of May, I mentioned to His Majesty the King that I had received information that Mr. Jacob Minesi, the businessman, was previously tipped to become the chairperson of the Ngonyama Trust Board had suggested to the king that he should appoint His Royal Highness Prince Vanana of the Guamania Royal House as his traditional Prime Minister. I said, ladies and gentlemen, in the presence of His Royal Highness Prince Vanana himself, His Majesty's, Majesty's legal advisor, was present as well, as well as other people, including some members of the royal family at this meeting and two former members of the Ngonyama Trust Board who are, who are lawyers themselves and also in the presence of a businessman by the name of uh, Mozi Dombela. When I mentioned this This thing at this meeting, there was no reaction to what I said by His Majesty. He neither confirmed it nor denied the information. It was Prince Varana himself who who just sighed and said, Oh, that was all. So I felt important to raise this matter with the king 
specifically because it involves the man who was said to become the chairperson of the Ngonyama Trust Board, who had been appointed by the king himself. And you recall that in February, Ms. Minisi issued this statement I've just mentioned, saying that he had declined his nomination to the position of, being, of chairing the Ngonyama Trust Board when the king offered uh, the position to him, citing tribalism and the fact that he would not be able to do business with the trust if he were his chairperson. Uh, that would be a conflict of interest, he said in the article. He claimed that the Zulu Kingdom is poor because effectively the board lacks business skills. Opting insisted for a Zulu person, he said. One can understand why there are concerns over the role that Mr. Jacob Nisi is playing on all the matters of the Zulu nation. All of them. All of them. But let me speak to to the matter of the position of the Chinese Prime Minister. There is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen, in all these attempts to drive a wedge between the King and his Prime Minister. I've seen these attempts many times over almost 70 years in the service of the King, Kingdom and the King. Greed for power or money has always been at the center of it as is the case just now. I've endured unjust attacks and hateful experiences for the greater part of my life because of this position. I hold the King's Prime Minister and I tolerated, I've tolerated it because I'm committed to serving and protecting my King and my, my Zulu nation. There is no personal benefit for holding this position. There is no salary attached to it. And there never has been. Not a single cent comes my way for being a Prime Minister. In fact, I'm not afforded even an office staff or any resources with which to perform responsibilities a traditional Prime Minister of the Zulu monarch and the Zulu nation. I'm obliged to fund this myself from my own pocket. This has always been the case. It is why I rely on the voluntary services of individuals in my own office and in my, in my party, whom I trust to assist with administration and media liaison. That's why it's the case. Some people in the media have tried to query this. I've never clung to this position. Listen, I've never clung to this position. In fact, years ago, in the presence of the royal family, I suggested to His Majesty, King Zuri Tinga Zulu, that he should release me from it. Because I was not appointed by him, I was appointed by his father, King Cyprian Peguzulu Nyangaisizwe, Kasolomon. King Zulitini, however, never withdrew me as traditional prime minister to the Zulu nation, a nation, to the Zulu monarch, rather, a nation, and never appointed anyone else in the position, and I served him in the nation until he passed away. I served him that for almost 50 years. I serve King Zulitin. I've accepted my responsibility. Honor as it has been, as I've said, because I know, ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen carefully. Princess Makoko, Constance Bilili, Ganga Zinyaka Tinzulu, my mother, had her own boyfriend. But her father, her, her brother, King Solomon Katinizulu, was very angered when one of the princesses was actually seduced by someone they regarded as a homeowner, and he, he wanted to marry this half-sister of his to my father. 
So the royal family influenced Princess Makongo Belala, this other half sister, not to accept. So King Solomon Gatilzulu then instructed her own sister, full sister, my mother, to marry my father, who was the King Solomon Prime Minister. In Kosumatole. And you are sort of, sort of trying to reward my father because my father, in Kosumatole, Telezi, had helped the king to resolve a very complicated matter between his principal Induna, Mankuluma Nagamasoma Punga, Ndwandwe, and Prince Mnyaiza, the son of the half-brother to King Gajwayo, which led the king then, King Solomon, to offer the hand of his only full sister. Prince Mnyaiza, incidentally, is the grandfather, is the grandfather of Prince Banana. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That is, I thank God for that. In a sense, I'm haunted by that, by that history and that, and that arrangement and that instruction by my uncle King Solomon to my mother to abandon her, her own boyfriend to marry my father. It is, it is the reason, ladies and gentlemen, for I have tolerated all the tribulations of the kingdom in this position. I must also point out that the position of traditional prime minister to this Zulu monarch and nation is not recognized in our constitution because the ruling party, the African National Congress, did not want it there. The whole issue of the recognition of the Zulu monarchy was a difficult one during constitutional negotiations. Say so pity that all of you are young. None of you are young. You do know about these negotiations for a new South Africa, a democratic South Africa. The whole issue of the recognition of the Zulu monarchy was a difficult one during constitutional negotiations. For I was the only one in the negotiations, who was advocating for the recognition of our king and of our kingdom, and the only one who was re- actually fighting for Amakosi, the traditional leaders. And that is why even now, Amakosi have no role at all in the... Uh-huh. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, Your Excellency. Can you hear me? Yes, you can continue. But please turn the video towards his, towards the left. Prince Uzi. But A little bit. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't hear. Continue. What, what you, can, you can continue. Uh, you can continue. Okay, 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 let me continue. It is only because of my insistence. Everyone knows that the older people know that the king himself is recognizing the constitution. On the 19th of, of April, 1994, I insisted that Mr. Declare the president must actually make sure that the position, the recognition of the Zulu monarchy is enshrined in the constitution. He was very reluctant. President F.W.G. Clark, actually, I forced him to reconvene parliament for one day just to include the recognition of the Zulu monarchy in the constitution at my insistence. I was told that everything relating to the position of the king would be dealt with in the constitution for KwaZulu-Natal when it was drafted later. 
when you table that draft in the legislature, that constitution, it was accepted by all parties, including the ANC. That constitution, indeed, it covered everything relating to the position of the king and the role of the traditional prime minister. However, however, at the 11th hour, when the constitutional court was set to certify the, certify the constitution of Kwazulu Natal, His Excellency, he was then just a member of the legislature, Mr. Jacob Zuma, who was the chairperson of the ANC in Kwazulu Natal, he went behind our backs and prevented the, the constitutional court from certifying the constitution. They did all that. Thus, the ANC stopped any recognition of this position in law. There had also been an agreement during negotiations that there would be international mediation to receive, to, to resolve rather the issue of the recognition of our king and the autonomy of our kingdom. Limited autonomy. I think just like as we can see in Uganda, where we have got the recognition of the Buganda uh, monarchy and the Toro monarchy. The then president of the country, Mr. F. W. D. Clark, Mr. Nelson Mandela, our former president, he was not president then, and I agreed at this private meeting, at this Kukuza meet, summit in the bush on the international mediation. However, international mediation was then torpedoed by the two spokesmen of the ANC. One of them is His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, who was the spokesman of the ANC, and the other was the spokesman of the National Party, Mr. Rolf Mayer, because prior to that, the National Party and the ANC went into a prosperous, they went into the bush, where they said during negotiation, they agreed between themselves that any consensus between the ANC and, 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 and and the National Party would, would be sufficient consensus. And the spokesman for that was Mr. Ramaphosa and Mr. Mayor. That it should not be done because it would mean the rewriting of the Constitution. So that topic of that. So I decided that the IFE was not going to go into election. We, we all decided that. But on the 19th of April, 1994, only eight days before the 1994 elections, Mr. Mandela, President de Klerk and I, I signed a solemn agreement that the international mediation would resume as soon as elections were over. But that promise again was dishonored because it, we agreed on the 19th that the international mediation Mr. Mandela agreed, Mr. De Klerk and I, that after the 27th, after the election, the international mediation would immediately. And this international mediation was very important, ladies and gentlemen. You know, among, among its members were people like Lord Carrington, who carried out all the negotiations of all the former colonies of Britain. And among it, one of the mediators was the former United States Secretary of State, Dr. Kissinger. So, so we agreed on that. But then after the election, I kept on asking Mr. Mr. Uh, de Klerk, when, when is this going to be done? And whenever I asked Mr. Deputy President de Klerk about it, he said, Whenever he raised it with Ms. Mandela, the president got very angry. He would he get angry and he wouldn't actually want to engage with the subject. Have it mentioned. You know? And so our, our, that agreement has not been honored to this day. It was dishonored. And at the same time, in the royal family itself, 
they emerged someone called Prince Sifiso Zulu, who was said to be a, a project of King Panda, a descendant of King Panda, who, who said that, you know, who also dismissed any idea of an international mediation and said the government would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I felt it necessary for me to provide you with this background because most of you are young, you don't know it, so that the idea may be put to rest once and for all. For all that I'm, that I'm clinging, any idea that I'm clinging to this position of traditional prime minister, as though I receive some personal benefit from holding it, when I get, I don't get even a blue cent. There would be no humiliation for me to relinquish it now. Having served loyally for almost 70 years, I would have no regrets whatsoever. But the simple fact is that I have not asked His Majesty to release me from the position. Because I, I, I told His Majesty from the very beginning that I would serve at His pleasure for as long as He required me and as long as I'm able for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of the Zulu nation. The king has not asked me to relinquish his position in spite of all these circumstances and I'm still in the service of the king. So you can see how much damage these journalists who wrote all this all, you know, actually staring, you know, pandemonium in, in the Zulu nation by saying that I, I've released it. I've relinquished it. I realize that the current speculation, which is baseless as it is, has been posted by a publication of an article that purports to convey the contents of a private letter which was written to me by His Majesty the King on the 17th of May this year. I'm disgusted, ladies and gentlemen, by the action of the journalist on the question. Because he has always dogged my staff. This journalist of the Daily News at one time, you know, published in the Daily Sun that I, I, I shortly after my wife had died, that I was going to get married to the grandson of the founder of the African National Congress Youth League, you know. Uh, the founder of the, he said, he speculated that, and he, you know, he'll forgive me. And he, he cruelly said that he wondered why I was going to do so because I can no longer poke, P-O-K-E. Apologies. Now, this is the journalist now who wrote that tribe. And by doing so, he has compromised the court case of his majesty the king by publishing confidential correspondence between the king and his prime minister relating to the case. The matter is sub and will be heard in the court in the next few days. I have no intention, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, of speaking about this case in the media, knowing that the matter is still in court. But I must point out that the contents of the king's letter to me were not quoted verbatim either. Certain words were changed and others were omitted, which materially affect the meaning of the letter. Moreover, despite claims by the journalists, to ma- no mention is made in the letter of my ever having expressed a preference or having demanded that the king must appoint Mr. the Honorable Mr. Jerome Goma, uh, the former judge who was the chairman of the Ngonyama board. That remains the king's prayer. I did that. I'm the author and the creator of Ngonyama trust, of the Ngonyama, Ngonyama, Ngonyama land. I'm the, I'm, I'm the author, and it is I who made the king the sole custodian. It was done by me. That, that this should be the, remain always as the, only as the king's prerogative. Beyond that, advising the chairperson of the board 
The chair president of the board should have legal expertise. As, as the former members have also advised, I have not told the king or tried to dictate to the king ever who he should appoint. I've never done so. These matters related to the Goyama transport will be fully aired in my meeting with the Makosi on Friday, the 26th of May in Mbangi. I shall therefore not discuss them any further here, but I'll reveal them to the Amakosi, who are, stock, who are stakeholders of, Ing- of Ngonyama land. For that reason, and because the mayors also work on the Ngonyama land, I've asked them to be present out. Everyone will be accredited. I don't, I will not entertain any gay treasures. But the media have allowed. Regarding that meeting, however, I wish to update to rather to wish to provide you with an update. As you are aware, ladies and gentlemen, I extended an invitation to our course of the Zulu Kingdom to attend the meet- that meeting on Friday, in which I, as the founder of the Ngonyama Trust and as the traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarch and nation, will brief Amakosi on recent developments regarding the Ngonyama transport. Ladies and gentlemen, since the invitation was issued, there have been several misrepresentations of the meeting being an imbizo. That is not an imbizo. It's not an imbizo. I wish to make it clear that I have not called the NIMBYs of the Zulu Nation, but only a meeting of Amakosi as the stakeholders of the Ngonyama Trust land, in their capacity only. They only. The meeting is thus not open to everyone, and the venue cannot accommodate everyone. It's only enough for Amakosi. I've, however, taken the decision to invite my mayors of municipalities we shall administer governance within tr- the trust land. And this is clearly important for them to have a clear understanding of the situation. To ensure that those attending are, are invited, I request that all Amakosi and all the mayors must register and be accredited in advance. They must receive accreditation. I won't allow any gate crashes. Very sensitive matters will be discussed, and the collective wisdom of Amakosi will be sought by myself. On that note, I would like to advise members of the media in advance that while you are welcome, because I know that the fourth estate in any democratic country is actually a feature of any democratic country. So you are welcome to join us in spite of the fact that this is a very sensitive discussion. Only during my briefing I would allow you to, to be present. Just with Amakosi to require. But afterwards, I please with you now, I announce that we in Amakosi will require privacy for our discussions on the matter I raise. I will ask you just to be patient and wait outside somewhere. And then we will reop- we'll reopen the meeting again for the media when decisions are, t- are announced. Please, I'm, I'm pleading with this. I'm pleading to you, ladies and gentlemen, don't be annoyed with us. I have tried as a Democrat to comply with the fact that you as the fourth estate must be there. You must not be excluded. In in these things, so that the nation must know what is going on. And you are welcome where I can, but where I say uh, this is off record, I'll ask you not, not to, when I make my briefing, where I've asked you, I've taken the risk to ask you to be present. Moreover, due to the sensitive nature of matters, I will, I'll, 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 I've said that up front, there should be an upfront agreement with all the media present 
that whatever I state as a matter of record be strictly treated as such, that is, that is, that is actually accepted. In fact, while the public interest and the right information are respected and upheld, it's necessary for the security of the individual to be protected as an overriding priority. Ladies and gentlemen, all, I'm not bullying anybody, but I say we should have this agreement. I've never in my, my whole life, in fact, I've been awarded, you know, accolade like the newsmaker of the way, you know, by, by, gen, by South, South African, journalists of South Africa. When I serve this country, I've been accredited by the Pretoria, what do you call, what do you call this? Because I've always, what do you call, uh, Respected the, the fourth estate. The media are therefore also kindly requested to register, as I say, for accreditation in advance, so that the registration should be complete before 10 o'clock. Be an indication that you accept the conditions we have of necessity. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very, very much. Thanks very much for your time. And I saw, I noticed in the Ilanga this morning that some people have stated that, that, that I, I've, 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 I've transgressed, that I've transgressed by holding this meeting, which is utter nonsense because I have every right to, to call the meeting for my course. And I, I had the, the response the, the courtesy to write a letter in, in the king. I mentioned this to the, to the king, in fact, verbal, and I, in, in writing I, I wrote him. And in fact, I was not asking for, for permission. I was just doing so. I'll tell you an example. That in 1994, because the king was angry because Umar Deba was not invited to the king's celebrations, Boycotted the what you call the, we cancelled the, the what you call the King Star celebrations and I called it and the Zulus came in their in their thousands, you know. And there there have been many meetings before during the almost seven years where I've called meeting of of of, of Omar Kosi. Even as an elder of the of this nation, I have every right, even if I was not the King's Prime Minister, as an elder of the nation and as a colleague of Omakosi, I have every right to call Omakosi. So it's also Bulgadesh to say that, you know, I should have got a permission. I didn't get the permission of the King. I want that matter clearly. Well, I thank you. That's, that is what I wanted to say to you. And I, I thank you profusely, ladies and gentlemen, for having come. But if you have any questions, then... Huh? Yes, there are.